I was tricked. I was fooled. I was gagged. I was shit. I don't know what to do. Petrified. Yeah. I don't ever feel that attached to characters. I, I would die, die for them. them. Morning. Welcome. It is Sunday and it is the start of the Thousand Doors Readathon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the readathon started at midnight last night and I stayed up till one reading what everyone was going to be reading and just seeing everyone like finally find out kind of what the readathon entails. Oh, it's just amazing seeing everyone's reaction to it. I, for my first prompt, I'm going with my own prompt, my own first prompt because it meant I could plan what I was going to read and it's... <sighs> It's history. history by Queen Whitney. So I am reading European Travel for the Monstrous Gentlewoman now. See, when you do clownery, the clown comes back to bite. This book is 700 pages. <laughs> Why am I doing this to myself for an eight day readathon? Anyway, the pages are quite short though. And I flew through this book last time. So I'm hoping for good things. I also have the audiobook, which I'm gonna go listen to like whilst I make food and whilst I get ready for the day. So like, hopefully I'll listen to quite a lot of it in that time. The audiobook is 24 hours long. I think it's the longest audiobook I've ever listened to. This is the second book in a series to a series I loved. I'm buddy reading it with Riley Marie. And yeah, she's already like 130 pages in. So I've got to catch up, but I'm hoping I'm going to love it. I want to finish this in like maybe the first two to three days, maximum four. I think that gives me enough time to get through the remaining four prompts. So I'm going to try and like daily vlog this um, as I go. Usually when I do a reading vlog, like I don't check it every day. <laughs> I'm going to try to. Um, and today I would like to get at least 200 pages into this book. I think I can do it. I'm so excited to get back into this series. Simon and Schuster Audio presents European travel for the monstrous gentlewoman at the end of the world. They encountered monsters. Catherine. Mary, you're not even going to protest? Mary. When has my protesting done any good? When it comes to a book, you usually do as you please. Catherine. That's not necessarily true. Mary. Anyway, Budapest is not the end of the world. Whilst I have been getting ready and I made my lunch, I've listened to the first 80 pages of European Travel for the Monstrous Gentlewoman. So I just realized once again, this is becoming a habit. I didn't give you a very good synopsis of this book. This bitch, here she go again. So the first book, The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter, we follow Mary Jekyll as her mother dies. She finds out that her mother was paying for the kind of living costs of a girl called Diana Hyde for many years. And that leads her on to discovering her sister Diana and eventually discovering all of these girls who uh, have some connections to like well-known men in Victorian literature. So we have Catherine Moreau, Beatrice Rappuccini, and Justine Frankenstein. And it is them, with the help of Sherlock and Watson, discovering what the Société des Alchemistes is what dark goings on they are performing. But we are following the girls again in this book and they are still trying to uncover the truth about the society. A key element, which I will speak a lot about in this in this vlog, is that they, they cut in. So Catherine is writing the book. So the whole thing is kind of like in her voice. And the other girls will cut in with their kind of beliefs on what is being said. So Beatrice goes, you make me sound so dramatic, Catherine. And Catherine goes, well, you are dramatic with your long black hair and clear olive complexion. <laughs> that is the best part of this book, seeing them complain and cut in with what Catherine is writing. Okay, I think that's a pretty good synopsis explanation. Back to me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> These characters are amazing. The writing style is so funny. Like the way they cut in with to each other is so funny and brilliant. Even just little touches, like the book will go, 
You can read about this in the last book, Strange Cases of the Alchemist's Daughter, available for two shillings. And then one of them will cut in going, maybe we shouldn't advertise this much. It's just so fun. It is brilliant American literature. And I don't care what anybody, it is. It's lit, it should be taught in schools. We're back with the gals, back with Sherlock and Watson, and they're trying to find out more about the Society of Scientists that they were trying to um, uncover secrets about in the first book. Also, we are hoping for a Mary and Sherlock romance. Like, I feel like we're gonna get it. I believe we're gonna get a Mary and Sherlock romance, and it's gonna be so good. The audiobook for this is incredible, but I'm really happy that I have the physical book so I can read a bit of it physically later. I mean, I just love this series, so it would feel wrong not to have the physical book. It's just some of the funniest, wittiest, clever writing because it's not like it's trying to get laughs out of you all the time like it's very occasional it's just the right amount it's a little, a little, a little dusting of it. it so I'm gonna go edit tonight's vlog a bit because I haven't finished editing it yet and then have the live show and then upload the video tonight so I probably won't see you again till this evening Riley was saying it's one of her favorite characters ever like as a group of characters and it's so true like they're all just so unique and clever and funny and brilliant i just love it booktube is really sleeping on this series it's so good okay i'm just about to go sleep it's been a long day <laughs> it's been a really amazing start to the readathon like i can't believe how many of you are participating all the stuff i'm being tagged in on like twitter and instagram it's like i can't actually keep up like it's just crazy i today have gotten 191 pages into European travel for the monstrous gentlewoman. Riley's like already on page 400 or something. Like I'm just not gonna catch up to her. I can accept that. <laughs> I love it so much, you guys. I love it so much. I love it so much. Sorry, this is incredible. If you want a Victorian with murder mystery tendencies or detective, girl gang, found family, like they're just amazing. I will say this forever. This is what Stalking Jack the Ripper wishes she could be. Stalking Jack the Ripper looks in the mirror and says, why am I not this series? These characters are amazing. They make me want to be a character person. Usually I'm a plot person, but these are literally the best characters I've ever read. They all bring something so different and unique to the table. I love reading about these funny, clever, witty, imaginative, creative, fearless girls. Like, the woman that you are today is just beautiful. Your love is, is amazing. The way you love people is inspirational. You are the definition of unconditional love. At the moment, we're kind of in two different storylines. And whenever I skip between them, I'm like, you're my favorite character. No, you're my favorite character. Like every time I go back to them, I'm like, I love you. <laughs> A couple of our girls have gone to Vienna. They traveled on the Orient Express and they have gone to Vienna to uncover a mystery that's going on there. And then a couple of them have stayed in London. I'm really enjoying seeing Victorian Europe. I think that's a really like cool thing. Usually all Victorian things are set in London. And so it's nice that we're venturing out a bit and exploring. The girls cutting in will never get old. Like the structure of this, I think it's even better than in the first book because in the first book you don't meet Catherine until I would say like maybe two-thirds of the way through the book at least halfway through the book you don't meet her so for a big chunk of it you kind of like don't know who she is this kind of narrator but in this one you finally know who she is and she's amazing and I think even more so you can tell that the book was written by her like as a character it's a really interesting character choice like the whole of the book is in some ways a characterization of her because she is the one writing it it's done done so well it's done so well I can't wait to read more of this I want to read a really big chunk of it tomorrow hopefully I'm going to be running some twitter sprints and hopefully I'm going to do an instagram live tomorrow night as well I would really like to do like a read-in with everyone it's just pure genius like I don't want to speak too soon because I'm only 190 pages in but oh my god I love this series like oh my god I just why why has no one else read this it's so good <laughs> I was actually, okay, this is really sad, but there was a point, I just read a line, I think it was from Catherine, and I was like, I love you, and I almost cried. Like, I just almost cried over how good it was. Dear Lord, what a sad little life, Jane. Is that weird? <laughs>
morning i am about to go leave for a doctor's appointment and i'm gonna listen to the audiobook as i go i am 27 percent of the way through Evening. <laughs> it is currently about half seven. I've just had my dinner and I spent most of the day doing stuff for uni, like lectures and stuff. I'm so tired. So I, I'm just gonna spend the rest of the evening reading. I have got a Instagram live reading with everyone in about half an hour. I am currently on page 265. Um, all the progress I've made today has just been through the audiobook, like on my way to my run, when I had to go out to run errands. I don't have much more to say other than I'm still loving it. Like I cannot see a world where this isn't five stars again. I adore this series. Something that it's doing really well actually is that it's like spoiling stuff for us. It's gonna happen in the rest the book. You naughty naughty, you teasing me, you naughty naughty. <laughs> Like when the girls cut in, so Catherine's writing the majority of the story and then they will interject here. Can you see it's got their names and then like little things that they're saying and they're spoiling stuff for us. It's gonna happen in the book. They're like, I can't believe I ended up getting trapped in a tower or something. And then Catherine will be like, can you try not to spoil the story? So there's so much we know, kind of, that's gonna happen to the characters. And I think that's just so fun. The book kind of spoiling it itself for us. It's something I've never read before and it's just really funny. And I would really recommend the audiobook for this. Is This kind of past section that I've read has just emphasized how good it is to me because there's so many different accents in this and they're managing to show off like so much nuance in the accent. And there's a character who's kind of from America. So like American is at the base of their accent, but it's kind of been covered up with time, like through living in lots of different places, living in Europe a lot. And like the way that the Americanisms come through in certain aspects, just the crafting of that and all these different accents is just so good. Like the narrator is amazing. It really brings the story to life even more for me. Diana, like when she narrates Diana, it's so good. Hello, it looks so dark, but it's only like three o'clock. It's not like that late in the day. I don't know where the day has gone. <laughs> I woke up today with like such a bad cold. That's what happens when they make you go to the doctors when you don't want to, to have your blood pressure taken. So you can have your pill. <laughs> what the most hideous experience for me to go through how horrible and shit. Like, I really don't want to do this and look what happens I get ill I spent the morning editing the video up till now which should not have taken me that long but it just has because I was just so ill you know when like you're ill so like basic tasks take you so long so I just decided to like sack the rest of the day off like I was supposed to be doing other things I can either do them for my bed or not do them at all that's the decision I've made <laughs> so I am gonna go try and finish the European travels for the monstrous gentleman I mean I don't know if I will I have got like Half of it left to read. That's never gonna happen. Ever, ever, I'm ever, 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 ever. I'm like wearing Tom's clothes. That's when you know I'm ill. Like, I just feel like I just wanna like wrap myself up in a ball and no one to see me, but the show, show must go, go on. on. <laughs> I'm feeling a bit better today. It is now Wednesday. So we're on day four of the readathon. But I'm gonna finish this today. I am on page 465. I'm still loving it, but I wanna finish it today. So I'm gonna try and not speak to you again till I've finished it. So I'm gonna try and finish this before the live show at six. I don't know how realistic that is, but I wanna try. Just gotta keep positive and keep busy. One thing I do want to say is, I didn't realise how many characters there were from Dracula in the first book. <laughs> There's loads of Dracula characters and I didn't realise. And also Mrs. Paul is from Jane Eyre. There's so many famous fictional characters in this that I didn't even realise because I haven't read all of these classics. I'm so excited to finish it because I am loving it, but I am also panicking about finishing the readathon. So it's brilliant, it's wonderful, the audiobook is still incredible, I just need to hurry up and read it because feeling shit yesterday, I just did not read enough.
I finished European travel for the monstrous gentleman last night at like 11 o'clock and I'm giving it five stars. I just love it so much. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> Thank you, universe. Like I can't get over how much I love these characters. I've never been a character person. Like I could give, give less of a shit about characters. Like whenever anyone says, oh, they're my child, I love them. I don't get it. Like I, I don't ever feel that attached to characters. I, I would, would die, die for them. them. I, I would, would like give, give my life. life. Protecting them. Not that they need me, cause like they're a lot more skilled than me. I would say the last 200 to 150 pages there were some scenes that could have been cut it did get a little bit slow but it does not impede how much i love it at all i think the audiobook is like essential essential to reading this oh my god there's so much i want to say diana writes like diana is an icon she's a businesswoman a tv star a host a producer an actress a philanthropist she's one of the most influential popular wealthy women in the world. She's this like 14 year old girl who just gives no shits. Like she just has a go at everyone the entire time and tells them how shit they are the entire time. And I just like live for it. We've got vampires. Vampires are like the big addition to this book that we're dealing with. We're dealing with the vamps. And I loved it. I loved how it kind of framed vampirism. I don't want to give too much away, but like uh, the way it talked about why someone would be a vampire and kind of explained it in the context. It really added this like spooky or autumnal feel to it. Catherine is one of my favorite characters, the one who's writing this. I think she's brilliant. I think she's so funny. I think she's so witty. I love that these girls are all so funny in their own way, clever, skillful, and they've just got this wonderful friendship. It is like such a wonderful found family. They care for each other so much. They rely on each other when they're in times of need. I just love it. Like there's literally nothing bad about this. I, 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 <laughs> if you like classics, if you like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Dracula, there's some characters from Jane Eyre in this, Frankenstein. Like if you like books like that, read this. Read this. I think it really takes those characters from classics with respect and twists them and like reimagines them in really really fun ways. I really liked how the group kind of split in half for the first part, they started together, they split in half for the first kind of half of the novel to two thirds and then they came back together at the end and it was just really fun to see the characters in kind of isolation from each other and then back together again and the way that it ended I am just so excited to read the last book in this series I need to get my hands on it so bad but I'm on a book buying ban until my birthday next year so I've just got to hope someone from my family gets it for me for Christmas like I've just got to like cross my fingers so now I have to find out what my next prompt is right so I need to click on four to five stars That sounds like me, is it me? Oh, hi, it's me. Okay, it is a meme of Queen Charity Shop Sue going, I'm, I'm back. back. <laughs> so the idea of this is that you read an author you read before, you read another part of a series, you read characters you read before. I literally say in the video that I wanna read this for this prompt if I get it. Um, I'm gonna read Nick and Charlie by Alice Oseman, which is a really short novella about the characters Nick and Charlie from Heartstopper, which you know is one of my favorite graphic novel series ever. I just finished Nick and Charlie by Alice Oseman and I love them so much. <laughs> so if you don't know, this follows Nick and Charlie who are the characters of the Heartstopper graphic novel series, which is my favorite graphic novel series of all time. They are the most perfect, cinnamon roll, cute, wonderful, lovely humans ever. And this is a basically a novella about Nick going away to university. So it's set like I think a year after the most recent Heartstopper graphic novel. It's about Charlie being really worried about Nick going to university and that kind of pressure to like break up when one of you goes to university. And like first I've got to say Nick Nelson goes to University of Leeds aka where I go to university aka why haven't I met him yet? <laughs> why are you laughing? 
mean, here's the thing. It's predictable. It's easy to read. Like, it took me about 45 minutes to read it. You know where it's going to go. You know the conflict is. You know what the conflict's going to be. I don't want to say it in case anyone's like, you spoiled the book. But, like, we all know where it's going. What I love about this is how, like, soft their relationship is and they basically just love spending time together they spend all their time together they have what they call a boring relationship and i think it's really nice to read about a relationship that like that i myself can relate to and like the idea of if that makes sense like i think relationships in romances are often like really dramatic or they they go on loads of adventures together or they live this like crazy life or it's you know it's so eventful they're always going out together it's just nice to read about something that reminds me a lot of my relationship i am gonna give it four stars it just kind of felt like a nice companion to the hearts topographic novel series it didn't necessarily feel like something in its own Thing. Part of what makes Heartstopper so good is the illustrations, how pure they are, how cute they are. I still really enjoyed it. It was lovely to be back with Nick and Charlie. They are like some of my favourite characters in the world. But yeah, I think what I enjoyed most about it was that, that appreciation of like a boring relationship. Because <laughs> I don't see it enough. <laughs> All of you, if you actually saw what my day-to-day -day life is like and how I never leave the house LMAO. I don't want to be a bitch, but you guys are really boring. It was just cute. They're just so cute. And it was a lovely read. And look at me. I'm two out of five. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Listen, I told you I could pick a 700 page book. I told you. So I need to go now and find out what my next prompt is going to be. Did you guess where it was going? No? Yes, but I didn't mind. Yes, DNF. Okay, I see I did guess where it was going. The question is, did I mind? I'm gonna say yes, but I didn't mind. I'm gonna say yes, I didn't mind because A, it was just cute and fun and quick and it's like a novella, like you kind of are gonna guess where it's gonna go anyway. So who have I got now? Oh, I've got Tasman. My third prompt for you is a book that feels like Marvel. Now you could interpret this as the MCU, you could interpret it as the comics, you could take a character that you really like or a character that you dislike, a certain character trait, for example, I big time relate to Gwen Paul. Yes, I'm writing a fan fiction about her, everyone can fuck off with their judgement. Uh, what to do? Yeah. Petrified. <laughs> I don't have any more in the series and it would be too long anyway. Okay, I'm gonna go look and I'll be back. <laughs> last night I decided to sleep on it because basically my reaction to that prompt was what do I pick because I don't think I, I don't tend to read a lot of superhero stuff I've seen some Marvel films my family love Marvel so my my family and my parents and my brother have seen like every Marvel film known to man but I've only really seen like the Avengers Guardians of the Galaxy I asked on Twitter basically if I could fit the book I felt like reading into the prompt somehow which is The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Ni Vo I actually just got sent this by a lovely subscriber Madeline I haven't had a chance to show it on my channel yet but the note in this was so touching and lovely and kind and like made me tear up of it it was it was so kind of you to send me this and I just felt like reading it last night let me get Twitter up because people informed me I could get away with it <laughs> Tammy said it was a bit of a stretch, but I think it could work. Elena said it features a civil war, so Captain America Civil War. Some said badass royals, so I just took it to fit. You're that girl, I knew you were. <laughs> I just really wanted to read this. It is another really short book. It's only 100 pages, so it's a novella. Basically, there's this like cleric, Chi, whose pronouns are they, them, and they have this bird on their shoulder who they can communicate with, and they've come to this town to kind of like document stuff, and they meet Rabbit, who is this old servant of an old monarch, of the old Empress of Salt and Fort. 
fortune and it's the story of resilience and resistance and living whilst forgotten because the empress was um, exiled by, by the emperor and it's about these women having sacrificed a lot and having lived through a lot together it's only very short obviously but it's a very touching story. It was so intimate, like it was so contained and, and just this magical, whimsical story told by this old woman, full of old folklore and mythology and belief in the stars and fortune tellers. But really at its heart, it was a story of like women. <laughs> women coming together and being each other's family and making mistakes and loving each other regardless and it was lovely I can't wait to read more of Nevo's writing I thought the writing was exquisite and beautiful but also so simple and the writing was very efficient like it only used the words that needed to be said if that makes sense which make which makes sense in the story because like rabbit kind of like is no bullshit like rabbit is going to tell you it to the point what happened so i loved it i can't wait to read more from this author i love what tor do with these short stories and i need to look into more of them so let's go through the next door the question of this one is did you like the main character i would say like the characters weren't necessarily there to be liked or to be attached to but i i really enjoyed reading about them and i liked their story and who they were so I'm gonna say yes and where does this lead me oh it's back to me this is like quite bad I'm getting all me <laughs> I'm an acquired taste you don't like me acquire some taste I do love that meme. What a great meme. So the idea of this one is to read a book you've heard mixed things about. I've heard a lot of really mixed things about Burn Our Bodies Down. I just thought of I could read The Wife Between Us by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen. This is one I've owned forever. What I might do is post a poll on Instagram. Also, wait, I just realized I forgot to say I'm giving... Where is it? I'm giving um, The Empress of Salt and Fortune four stars. I really enjoyed it. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Yoga with Adrian. I'm Adrian, and this is Benji. And this is yoga for when you feel dead inside. Morning! I've had a really productive morning actually. I cleaned the bathroom, I did some yoga. I know I put the poll up last night. Burn our bodies down, unanimously won it. But then I realized I can't actually get the audiobook for it. It was available for pre-order, not to actually buy on Audible. I just didn't see that when I looked it up on camera. And so I was like, nah. I don't see it for me, but okay. I need an audiobook because I knew that this morning I would only have time to like listen to an audiobook. I wouldn't have a lot of time to physically read until like more of the afternoon. And then I thought of something that I'd forgotten about because it it's not wasn't on my book cart. I'd completely forgotten about it. And I was like, that totally works. And I'm so in the mood for it. And it is The Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie. So I've heard some people say this is one of her best. Like this is one of her best Poro novels. I'm working my way through them in order of publication because although you don't have to read them all in order of publication, there's a few that spoil each other. And so just for the sake of it, I'm reading them in order. I've heard other people say it's a bit basic, a bit boring, a bit average. It hasn't really got anything like super exciting to it. I'm really enjoying it so far. I've managed to listen to the first 126 pages whilst I've been cleaning this morning and like making my lunch. So a woman named Mrs. Ferris has died. The doctor in the village goes to kind of do an autopsy or whatever. Then he goes to his friend Roger Ackroyd's house who had like kind of been been romantically linked with this woman. Roger Ackroyd admits that she confided in him that she murdered her late husband a year ago and someone has been blackmailing her for the past year and it's someone in Roger Ackroyd's kind of wider circle. He tells Dr. Shepard that she committed suicide and then it turns out she's written a letter to him telling him who the person who was blackmailing her was and Roger Ackroyd wants to read the letter on his own so he sends Dr. Shepard away and then Roger Ackroyd is murdered and the letter has gone missing. Too much drama for me. <sighs> so obviously it's someone linked to the blackmailing who has committed the murder. And it's just a fun, simple mystery. It's set in this like gossipy town, where, like this quaint little English town with a few big houses and everyone just milling around in the countryside and they all like gossip on each other. So everyone like knows little things about each other. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing, this actually gets me a bit upset. Everyone seems to hate simple mysteries. I love simple 
mysteries. And the thing is, I don't feel like enough modern authors do it. Like if Agatha Christie wasn't one of the only people out here doing the simple mystery well, I wouldn't like be only, I wouldn't be reading her as much as I was. I'd be reading modern ones. But for me, like the guest list is one of them. One by One by Ruth Ware, which has just come out, is definitely a very simple mystery. And it's getting really bad reviews. Everyone says it's boring. There's not enough twists. And like, sometimes you don't need that many twists. You just need a group of characters all under suspicion. All of them have got secrets to hide. One of them commit the murder and you find the clues out and it's wonderful. I love simple mysteries. It's so much fun to be back with Poro. He has been living in the village like undercover and he's like, okay, I'm coming out of retirement to solve this. Like when there's all of these mysteries from them afterwards. I'm just really enjoying it. I'm just having a lot of fun reading it. now 200 pages in and I still don't have a clue who did it. Like, I, I have no idea. I'm getting older. I, I don't know if I can, if I want all this drama all the time, if I'm being honest. I'm enjoying it, but I don't think I'm gonna have any idea of what my rating is until the end. Uh, because it's in this more like domestic environment, it's not like an exciting environment, like on the Orient Express, it's slower. I don't, yeah, I'm not gonna know my rating until I find out who the killer is and it all comes together at the end. Okay, can you all say hello? Oh my God, hello. Oh my God, hey everyone. Oh my God, I just realized my mic, my camera mic wasn't on when I was filming you. I pressed the wrong button. We may have to reenact it, everyone. <laughs> okay, we may have to act like that didn't happen. We may have to do it again because I need the shot. Oh my God, hi. <laughs> oh no, you're all saying you're ready. I've got to hide that. No, okay. There's so many, there's so many hearts. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God. I was tricked, I was fooled, I was gagged, I was shook. Miss Agatha Christie. Girl, you have done it again. Constantly raising the bar for us all and doing it flawlessly. I didn't know, I, didn't, I could never have guessed this. Oh my God. <gasps> Almost up until the end, I was like, maybe it's a 3.5, a 3.75, maybe a four. But the ending, without a doubt, has made it like a 4.5. Like it's the ending. <laughs> this was like peak trickery, leaving everything in plain sight for the reader in terms of the murder. Making you feel like an idiot for not realizing it sooner. Oh my God, it was so good. It was like peak simple mystery well done revealing it slowly <sighs> it was so good oh my god the ending was amazing something i will say i was really happy when i realized that the narrator of this wasn't hastings hastings is the narrator of like the first three Praro books i don't know if he's the narrator of like the further ones or if he stops now but like i didn't vibe with hastings like me and hastings we just didn't really get along. Me and the narrator of this one got along. I liked him a lot more. I just thought he was a more interesting character than Hastings. I thought he brought something new to the table, but also blended into the background when he needed to. The murder was so clever. The way it all played out was so clever. There were a few things I called. There were a few twists that I called earlier on, but nothing in terms of like who the murderer was. It, this just makes me so excited to read all of Agatha Christie's stuff. Like one day I want to have read all of Agatha Christie's stuff. Like I just think she's a genius at setting up these characters and introducing something new to the like simple classic mystery. Poirot just being so funny. Like he's just so weird, the stuff he says, like calling himself Papa Poirot. Like what the hell is this guy on? <laughs> This is disgusting. I like it though. I'm giving this 4.5 stars. It was really good. Now we must find out my final prompt. Where have I put my earphones? Then come back here and I'll be asking you whether you enjoyed the setting. Did I enjoy the setting? Yes, I did. 
Hi there. Oh, it's Monica. I'm Monica, and I'm so happy to hear that you loved the setting Hi. in your last read. My prompt is language, and you can take this in a couple of different directions. Maybe you want to read a book that has a completely made up language and alphabet, like the Lord of the Rings or the Artemis Fowl series. Or maybe you want to pick up a book that plays with language in a fun way, like Carry On by Rainbow Rowell, where different phrases are used as magic spells throughout the novel. Or maybe you want to read a book that's been translated from another language into your own. So for example, I have Grass or Kim Ji Young, born 1982, another Korean novel. Language. Language. <laughs> You good? No, you're not. You're not, baby, and it's okay. You're not good, and it's okay. You don't need to be good all the time. Okay, I was stumped by this for a hot second because I knew I wanted to read a translated book for this. And then I just decided to look up the books that Monica recommends in the video because, like, what's the point of her recommending me these books if I don't pay attention to it? And the last one that she mentions, Kim Ji Young, born 1982, I found on Audible. So I'm going to listen to the audiobook of that tomorrow it's only three and a half hours so it won't take me that long yeah i don't know much about it but i'm trusting monica <laughs> So I finished Kim Ji Young Born 1982 and I enjoyed it, but I think I'm going to give it like a 3.5 stars. We follow Kim Ji Young and we meet her as an adult and she's married, she has a child and she starts to take on the personalities of other women in her life without realising it. So women dead and alive, she starts acting like them and speaking like them and then she can't remember it afterwards. And from there we go back throughout her life and follow her throughout her life, essentially trying to break out of the gender boundaries that are placed on women and the everyday sexism that is placed on women. The premise of it I love, the execution of it I love. <laughs> it's a book I would recommend and recommend and recommend. I think it does such a great job of looking at the you know systematic oppression and sexism that women face and how the world is not constructed for women's success but I just think that the style of writing wasn't for me and prevented me from enjoying it I think for me writing is like the first barrier into whether I enjoy a book then it's plot then it's characters and it reminded me a lot of I think it's called lullaby or the nanny depending on where you live it's got different names in different places it reminded me a lot of that in this short character study of a woman very different subject matters but kind of literary fiction and I just think I don't enjoy that that kind of like cold it's written as if you're, you're examining uh, Kim Ji Young and I just think that that kind of style of like more literary fiction I just don't vibe with so it wasn't it wasn't I would recommend this book loads I could see how if this is a style of writing you like or style of writing isn't something that like necessarily affects your enjoyment of a book you could easily give five stars like I can I can completely see that but I just didn't feel immersed in the story at any point it's sad it's sad you know it's, it's a shame. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much if you joined us for the Thousand Doors Readathon. I have had the most fun, like the most fun ever. I feel so lucky that so many people participated. Me, Tasman and Emma have all enjoyed it so much. Like, I did not think this many people would participate and the amount that you guys have been engaging with it and just enjoying it has been absolutely incredible. Like, I I really can't believe it. I feel so lucky. I'm so glad that so many of you have enjoyed the readathon. It's been one of my favourite experiences on Booktube in the kind of year and a bit that I've been on here. Like, it's literally been my highlight of Booktube so far. I can't tell you how amazing it has been. Just seeing all the books you've read and how, how much fun it's been. I just feel so lucky so thank you so much if you've joined us make sure you subscribe to Tasman and Emma if you haven't already I don't know why you wouldn't have done but if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to Tasman and Emma that's it from me I hope you enjoyed this vlog I know that I read one book for a very very long time <laughs> But I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. So thank you all so much for joining. And yeah, I will see you very, very soon in another video. Bye.